In prison, I wrote my mother a letter. I want to tell you something about myself you might not want to hear. I'm sorry. I want to tell you I never have been and never will be a woman. The loneliness I experienced in prison and finding myself among oppressed people I didn't know has given me the courage to talk about who I really am. Aula, the woman, died here and is never coming back. I'm Ali, with his will and strength. I'll never be as feminine as you. Please don't get upset. Once I get out of here, I'll only be Ali and will never be scared of anything anymore. My biggest problem here is loneliness, and I suffer from it a lot. When I talk to others about it, they don't understand me or my feelings. They don't understand what I went through before I arrived here. I don't feel comfortable with anyone, so I've decided to be on my own. I'm tired of pretending I'm not Ali, although I feel like Ali on the inside. Whenever I form bonds, I feel like they're not authentic or complete because I can't be myself. I arrived in Magdeburg and applied to work for the police here. And before that, I stayed in Halberstadt for a month. When I got here, I didn't know much about the city or even much about Germany. I signed up for a German language school to busy myself. But I was shocked because there was an issue with my name. How could the instructor call me a woman? I'm not a woman. So, I quit the school. After that, I didn't leave the house for two months. I feel like I can't integrate into society because of my documents, identity, and appearance. When I get mail addressed to Miss Aula Hamidi, it feels like my heart is being ripped out of my chest. How should I present myself to my friends? The issue has caused me so many problems, and I'm sick of it. There haven't been any opportunities for me to change my gender or help myself in any other way since my arrival. And it's been very painful for me. I stay home and can't make new friends. 
Instead, my old friends come to visit, but everything's staying the same, so the days are boring and monotonous. Since there isn't much to do in Magdeburg, all I do every day is go down to the river to drink coffee and smoke a cigarette. I can't even find a job. I even tried to find one paid under the table, but my name was a problem again. My entire life plays out between these two identities, Ula and Ali, and I just can't take it anymore. I got in touch with a person named Hossam four months ago. I sent him all my details and told him everything about myself while I was still in Syria. Because I wanted to finally find myself, Ali. I'm longing for the moment when my heart fits together with my feelings and my body. I'll change cities and move to Berlin soon. I want to search for Ali there. The conflict between Aula and Ali stems from my mental fatigue. Aula has suffered a lot. Her family forced her to get married, and she was raped. I don't know if I should feel bad for her or if I'm sad because of her. But she means nothing to me anymore. Except that she was treated unfairly, and I don't like injustice or people allowing themselves to be treated badly. I just don't know what to think about her. When I think back on her, I don't like her. But I feel bad for her, because she lets someone use her and her body. Ali didn't appear out of the blue. I've had these feelings since I was a child. I've known I wasn't normal since puberty. It was tough, and I didn't understand what made me different. I'd heard of transgender people, and although I didn't want to be like them, I couldn't help it. I never could identify with Aula. So I decided to completely give her up. You should first go to see Mahmoud. After Mahmoud, we'll make an appointment with the doctor, so he can give us some advice. To be honest, the procedure takes a long time. Yes, it does. We'll visit Anas. He's a friend of mine and a urologist, and he'll have an idea of how long it will take. Promise me that this will stay between the two of us. Yes, of course. I don't know him, but if you know he won't be open about the issue, I don't want to consult him. Yes, I know you want someone very open-minded. This will stay a secret, as usual. No one will find out that you're actually Ula and not Ali. I'm not Aula. I'm Ali. Yes, I know, but... No, no buts. It's your issue. It's not my business. Yes, it is, because I don't see myself as Aula. There is no Aula. It's what your documents say. I don't care about the documents. They're not mine. I know it's not part of our agreement, but how can we change this? We have to change your name first, right? There's a procedure to be followed. You need to change your sex, right? 
We need to know the whole process. Take them off the stove, they're done. They need a bit longer. I've never worked with cars before, but I'm working here now to beef up my body. This isn't really my kind of job. I'm not strong enough, because it takes muscles. I carry around things that weigh more than I do, like all kinds of car parts and even engines. I wouldn't have been able to handle that before, but I can now. I've been working here for two months. My co-workers here are tall and strong, and they often ask me how I can do this work with such a small body. Push harder. You have to put your weight on it from behind. I feel like I'm stronger than most normal men. Or maybe I just think that to prove to myself I'm a normal man. I'm a man. A man along with my job and goals and everything that goes with that. The wrench isn't positioned right. It should be straight. More, more. Good job. I started taking hormones four months ago, and thank God the treatment's showing effects. I've also started learning German. Since I'm alone a lot, memories of my time in prison come back to mind. Horrible details of my imprisonment. Images of the people I was there with. I was detained on October 12, 2012. They caught me on Dara Highway. I used to smuggle people from Damascus to Dara and from Dara to Jordan. We would get them fake IDs and use the IDs to smuggle them across the border. I was first detained in Al Sanamin and later transferred to Dara. And in Dara, they put me in solitary confinement. There were mirrors everywhere in the cell, meaning your every move was watched. It was very cold. I felt like I was losing my soul, and I couldn't feel my blood. No one gave me any food or took me to the bathroom for two days. They just gave me an empty bottle when I entered the cell. There's no mercy and no God inside the prison. It was horrible seeing broken women get beaten by men. When they would take us to the bathroom, we had to jump over dead bodies. There was blood all over the walls. The bodies were wrapped in blankets, and we had to jump over them. Stop. After two months, the beating stopped, and I was taken out of solitary confinement. 
Get in, you animal. When they opened the door of the prison, I saw around 25 women, a clothesline, and a bucket. It smelled very bad. In the middle of it all, the women were eating, smiling, trying to have fun and singing. I remained stuck inside for a long time while women came and went. Many were released, but I stayed in prison. At some point I was put on trial and my case was finally discussed. I was then released on bail. And I left the country. Aula, the woman, died here and is never coming back. I have nothing left to lose because I don't know if I will ever breathe fresh air again. But in spite of it all, I'm sure I'm your son and not your daughter. I know it's very hard for you to hear that, but it's how I was born. I'm Ali, with his will and strength. I'll never be as feminine as you. Please don't get upset. Once I get out of here, I'll only be Ali and won't be scared of anything anymore. I changed my name through a court order in Berlin and brought the medical report to the judge. I had to wait six months for the court to recognize me as transgender. I went to France for my first trip after I was recognized as transgender. The name on my passport was finally Ali and it was the most satisfying thing I've ever done. Back then, my ID still said Aula. I would get scared whenever I had to show it. But now I can show my ID with confidence. I'm incredibly happy. In the future, I want to have a little house with my family and give all my feelings to someone who really deserves it. I'm also thinking about adopting a child. 
I've always had parental feelings, but I never felt I could be a mother. How was I able to live in that body before? I definitely did the right thing. And I will keep on going. I try not to think about whether society will judge me for transitioning into a man. It's not my fault. It was basically imposed on me. I don't have to think about whether it's right. But I can't talk about my situation with anyone. I don't question God's creation. I'm a Muslim and not a non-believer. I just want to live normally, like any other person. Everyone has issues with themselves, whether they're male or female. And that's why I show respect to anyone facing difficulties. Because I've gone through my own difficulties transitioning from a woman to a man. Treat me like the person I am on the inside. I'm working on being a good person myself. And that's it. Don't treat me like I'm just transgender. Humanity has progressed further than that. I spent many great days with my Aunt Ula in Damascus. I will never forget how she was, how she looked, and the way she would think when she lived in Damascus. I spent my whole childhood with her. Ula and Ali think the same way, and nothing has changed for me between the two. Her appearance may have changed when she transitioned from a woman to a man, and it was strange for me at first, but I've worked on accepting it. I also live in exile and have no one here except my aunt, uncle and cousins. So I have to maintain my family bonds. I don't think about what would have become of me if I'd stayed in Syria. I live in Germany now. People are equal here, whether they're male or female. Things are different in Syria and throughout Arabic society. I'm a human being. I have the right to live, and I have the right to be happy and accepted. I've become older in this great city, 
It teaches you that you're a human being with your own identity and that you can live normally. And that's all I wanted from my life. I didn't do anything to make myself an outcast. Quite to the contrary, I'm surrounded by friends who love me, and I love them. They respect me, and I respect them. Ali is more than a friend. He's like a brother to me, and I'm like his older sister. We're very close. We talk about our problems together, and sometimes we understand each other without even talking. My goal is to study photography. We should finally focus on the important things until the end of the year. But you're already doing so many things. You have the play, the film, and the surgery. You really want more? Yes, I want more. I still have time to spare. My name is Adriana Santos, and I'm from Spain. I learned Arabic in Damascus. I'm a freelance translator for Arabic, French, and Spanish, and maybe German now. I was also the translator for Ali's play. He invited me to Berlin and asked me to stay at his place temporarily. So I stayed there for two months before finding my current apartment. And Ali has helped me a lot in Berlin and in life and in my decision to move here permanently. We're also planning many projects for the future. Art, theater, maybe a film.
In two days, I will have a breast operation, and it will be my first surgery. I'm a bit stressed, but not because of the procedure itself. I'm afraid the same thing might happen as last time. When I came into the operating room, they told me the surgery wouldn't happen. All my documents are fine, and I've received all the approvals, which are very hard to get. I'm still stressed, but very happy at the same time. I'm counting the minutes until the operation. Tomorrow I have an appointment with the plastic surgeon. Of course, I could have never ever done this in my home country, because the topic is taboo. I'm ready and prepared for anything, because it's what I really want from the bottom of my heart. I want to leave my old life behind and move on to the next step. I want to finish what I've started. I could never go back. It's impossible to turn around. I want to keep going. What are you doing today, Ali? I'm having my breast surgery. Are you scared? No, I'm not scared at all. I'm not even scared about any complications that might arise. I'm just not scared of the operation. I'm going in there with optimism. But this is the first time in your life you'll get rid of physical parts of Ula? That's what I'm particularly happy about. Before the operation, I had to shave my chest. Today, I did a lot of things for the last time in my life. And I'm moving on to new things now. I'm happy that from now on, I'll look the way I want. I'll go back to the gym and work out again. I have a lot of t-shirts I used to feel too shy to wear, but now I'll finally feel comfortable wearing them. I may feel a bit stressed and agitated mentally, but definitely not physically. And you're sure you won't regret this? No, I'm not scared I'll regret this operation. But I'm starting to feel a bit afraid of the surgery, and especially the anesthesia. I want this very badly, and I won't regret it.
Ali has a very good soul. When I met him, I didn't notice anything strange about him. It was like meeting a man with a woman's memories, united in one soul, or rather, in one body. With time, I better understood how someone can be a man with the memories of a woman. I would even say this makes Ali a better man, because he understands women well and knows what he needs in life and where he's going. He has adapted his body to be the way he wanted it. And that's a beautiful thing. When Ali decided to change genders, one of his goals was to be the perfect masculine man. The reason being is that in our society, and especially in Damascus, where I'm from, men have lost their virility. We may have a lot of men, but not the true manliness we know from old tales. Men with moustaches who are generous and kind, who take care of everything around them and take care of women. I didn't think I could ever be with a man, but Ali changed that because he used to be a woman and knows how to treat women right. He tries not to make any of the typical mistakes men normally do with women, and he's replaced the negative aspects of men with something positive, making him the perfect man for me. I've never found these qualities in any other men I've met. He knows what the problems are in our society, and especially the ones related to the concepts of men and women. And he's trying to resolve them through his body and soul. I've never seen anything like that. He's learning from himself. He has the ability to change his body and hormones, but keep his memories as a woman intact while progressing further. My forearm is basically made of silicone now. A tube goes into and out of my forearm every day, for seven months. It's used to take flesh from my arm, which will then be replaced with flesh from my stomach. The silicone tube and the tissue surrounding it will be used to create my new genitals. And the aim is for the urethra to pass through the silicone tube. During the surgery, my forearm will be cut open here and here, and later sewn back together, and the flesh removed will be used to make my genitals. They grow the head here, which will be three centimeters, and from here, they grow the testicles, also three centimeters. And they'll take flesh from my thigh to reconstruct my forearm. Then my genitals will be created and grafted. I've been undergoing these operations for about seven months now. And the next one is my final surgery. Then, in about a year, there will be almost no scars visible.
Um, after the last operation, my roommate started to ask about us. I replied that she's my wife. Sie ist meine Frau. But we don't actually want to put a label on our relationship. She's my wife, my lover, my sister, my mother, and many other things. But it gives you the feeling of greater inner stability if you can label your relationship. I've had good relationships and known nice people in my life. But Susu gave me true stability. For example, when I come home, I know there's someone who loves me waiting for me. It's nice sitting here in the sun. It's a bit cold here. Are you cold? A bit. Why didn't you tell me? It's no big deal. I left the Netherlands and came to live here with Ali. We didn't really have a plan. But we decided to live together after the COVID-19 pandemic broke out. If you were to decide to get married, would you be afraid your families and society might not accept you? The family members that I care about and who care about me and who I have a good relationship with are all fine with it. They've met Ali, we've talked. And in the end, I have the freedom to choose what I want in my life without being pressured from the outside. Being with Soad has helped me to better build my character. Because I know what Aula would have felt in a situation. So I know how my words come across to Soad. All I want is for us to get along well. She's not the woman, and I'm not the man in our relationship. She's a person, and I'm a person. We respect each other as equals. When I talk with her about my feelings and what's going on deep in my heart, I also reflect on myself. We may be man and woman, but in the end, we're both people. I transport medical samples for labs and doctors. I pick up the samples from doctors and take them to the central lab in Berlin to be analyzed. The next day I pick up the results and bring them back to the doctors. I work eight hours a day, seven days a week. But I'm happy because I don't have to carry anything heavy. After I got the body I wanted, I moved into a house in Berlin and I now have a girlfriend and a steady job. 
I feel that my life started in Berlin. I was born in Berlin, and everything I'd ever dreamed of all happened in Berlin. Once I made peace with myself, I was able to love my former self, Aula. I respect her and am sorry for her because she always survived everything, all the difficult chapters of her life. When I ran away from my family's home, when I left the country, when I was forced to marry but ran away, when I was detained and later I got out of prison, I always she always survived. She has missed out on so many things since my transformation. So I decided to make up for it. And I got tattoos. Here, I'll show you them. This is the tattoo. That's Aula. And this is Ali. Aula is weak here, and Ali is hugging her and giving her strength. Unfortunately, that's because we live in a male-dominated society. So if I'm a man, I have to be strong, even if I don't want to be. And I have another tattoo. In this tattoo, I will always hold her hand and help her up. I'm helping myself to deal with the situation. If I hadn't had all those operations and had stayed in Syria, I no doubt would have had to fight for my life because Aula never could have survived. I picked the right path for Aula and Ali, because otherwise my life could have ended like that of many other women who took their lives due to the abuse society condones. And I probably would have done the same. It wouldn't have been a sign of weakness, but simply a decision.